a Kryptonian scientist, the Days of Our Lives inspiration, and a young Barry Allen. While these DC actors are no longer with us, their performances will live on. When it comes to daily newspaper editors who unknowingly work alongside world-famous crime fighters, J. Jonah Jameson of the Daily Bugle tends to overshadow Perry White to the Daily Planet. That's got nothing to do with either of their journalistic abilities, of course. JJ's just a larger-than-life personality and essentially one of the villains in many Spider-Man stories. On the other hand, Perry White's such a die-hard print media professional and advocate, he's been played by many more actors than JJ, who's principally associated with the version played by J.K. Simmons in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. He is, in my 40 years in this business, the fastest typist I've ever seen. Although he's not the only live-action Perry White, the Superman world's answer to Simmons is probably Jackie Cooper who corrects Clark Kent's spelling errors in Superman, Superman 2, Superman 3, and Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Despite a major role in one of the most successful film franchises of the 1980s, Cooper arguably never surpassed his career zenith at the age of nine, when he became the youngest actor ever nominated for Best Actor at the 1931 Academy Awards. But you could also argue that acting steadily in film and TV from the early 30s up until 1990 is a bigger accomplishment than any single role or nomination. Cooper died in 2011 at the age of 88. Easy, miss. I've got you. you. You've got me! Who's got you?! The tragically short nature of Christopher Reeve's life has been widely publicized, but when Margot Kidder passed away in May 2018 at 69, we still felt it was too soon. Arguably, no major DC character has evolved and improved over the decades more than Lois Lane. Once a bumbling, airheaded klutz in constant need of rescue, today's Lois is a world-famous journalist and media personality, generally depicted as a savvier operator than a Kryptonian husband. Now and again, Lois does her own fair share of metahuman adjacent crime fighting, albeit in a far less conspicuous capacity than her spouse or most of his colleagues. Kidder appears in all the Superman films co starring Reeve, and we need only focus on Superman 2 for examples of Kidder helping undo the perception of Lois as a mere damsel in distress. Kidder's Lois is not oblivious, she's occasionally reckless, but only when journalistic truth is at stake. Unlike previous iterations, Kidder's Lois figures out that her bumbling co-worker and the literal benevolent space god that follows her around happen to be the same guy, setting a precedent for future Lois Lanes who don't buy that silly glasses disguise either. The quartet of Batman films starting with Batman and ending with Batman and Robin can feel a little disjointed, beginning in a gloomy, quirky iteration of Gotham directed by Tim Burton and ending with a candy-coated cartoon fever dream imagined by Joel Schumacher. The series foregoes a solid sense of consistency, except when it comes to Alfred. Well, I think I've embarrassed him for long enough. Veteran British actor Michael Goff holds down the fort as Batman's congenial butler Alfred Pennyworth in all four films, including Batman Returns and Batman Forever. As is more or less customary for Alfred, Goff's version functions as a voice of reason throughout Batman's adventures. While he's more than happy to help Bruce and his sidekick save the world, he'd sleep a little easier if his surrogate son could just get set up with a nice girl and hang up the Bat costume. Goff's TV, film, and theater career started in the mid-1940s, so to say that there was a little more to his career than his run as Alfred would be a substantial understatement. Goff passed away in March 2011 at 94, roughly a mere six years short of triple digits. With all due respect to Jeep Swenson, who portrayed the venomed-up villain in Batman and Robin, it's probably fair to say audiences prefer the version of Bane played by Tom Hardy in The Dark Knight Rises. But we don't say that to diminish Swenson's acting abilities. After all, the problems with Batman and Robin extend far beyond its presentation of Bane. Swenson caught more than one significant crummy break during his essentially successful career, in which he spent time in multiple sections of the entertainment industry. His tenure with the once prominent but currently defunct World Championship Wrestling might have lasted longer had the organization's creative department come up with a less aggressively offensive and anti-Semitic name for him than the Final Solution. Swenson died shortly after the release of Batman and Robin in 1997 at the age of 40. You might not immediately recognize his name, but we assure you, you know William Hoopkins. He's mentioned here specifically for his turn as a corrupt Lieutenant Eckert in Batman, and to a lesser extent, for the solemn duty of performing in Superman for the quest for peace in the guise of Harry Howler, but the character actor had a few more notable credits. For instance, in Star Wars, his character named Porkins pilots a ship called an X-Wing and attacks a moon-sized space station known as the Death Star. Though known for minor roles in Hollywood, his reputation in London's theater scene was a different story. His obituary cites his ongoing starring role in the play Hitchcock Blonde as his career's greatest triumph. But for actors with as many projects under their belts as Hootkins, what they're known for becomes a matter of subjectivity in some respects. He died in 2005 at the age of 57. A fixture of televised comedy since her late 80s stint on Saturday Night Live, with subsequent recurring roles on The Simpsons and Third Rock from the Sun, Jan Hooks also appeared in Batman Returns. 
Evil businessman Max Shrek hires her character to explain stuff to presumptive Gotham City mayoral candidate the Penguin, like why voters prefer fingers to flippers. The Tim Burton-directed sequel to Batman is not Hook's only DC-related credit. She also plays a woman who claims to be raising Superman's love child on CBS TV's Superman 50th Anniversary Special, a light-hearted slice of Superman ephemera. Hooks passed away in 2014 at 57 years old. Danny DeVito's Penguin recruits a wide variety of minions for his crime spree in Batman Returns, although they don't all have obvious utilitarian value. If you're putting together a gang to inflict the maximum amount of violence and mayhem, then why bother signing up an organ grinder? Penguin's thinking may be too sophisticated for us to comprehend, so we just have to take it on faith that the musical accompaniment produced by Vincent Scavelli's character, plus the amusement provided by his dancing monkey, was essential to Oswald Cobblepot's diabolical machinations. Beyond the confines of Batman Returns, Schiavelli carved out a niche as one of the great character actors of his era with turns in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Pastimes at Ridgemont High, and Ghost. X-Files fans may recognize him from the cult favorite episode Humbug, in which he guest stars along with Michael J. Anderson and Jim Rose, founder of the circus of the same name. Schiavelli passed away in 2005 at the age of 57. A high-ranking staff member at Arkham Asylum who happens to be named Dr. Burton is not even close to the goofiest thing in Batman Forever. But creating a toss-away character for purposes of delivering a good-natured dig at director Tim Burton, who oversaw the previous two Batman films, feels like a cheeky move on the part of director Joel Schumacher. We suppose it would be disappointing for René Auberginois if his only major acting work consisted of a brief scene as a gag character at the end of a lesser Batman movie, but that's not even close to the case. Though he contributed a physical or vocal performance to an insane amount of TV shows, including numerous DC and Marvel animated projects, Auberginois is most widely remembered as Odo on Star Trek Deep Space Nine. He died in 2019, not long after the release of the critically beloved First Cow, one of his last movies, at the age of 79. Sam Lane doesn't always get to live up to his full potential in live-action Superman iterations, so in a way, it's unfortunate that we must gloss over Harb Presnell's role as Lois Lane's estranged father on Lois and Clark to discuss his more significant work. The writer-director team of Joel and Ethan Cohen put themselves on Hollywood's radar with Blood Simple, but they didn't demonstrate their full mastery of small-town murder drama until Fargo. Used car salesman Jerry Lundgaard hires a pair of hitmen for an elaborate kidnapping scheme designed to scam his father-in-law. The situation collapses into a tragic bloody shambles. The American Film Institute once ranked Fargo as one of the top 100 films of all time, and it would be a completely different movie without the veteran Presnell's conjuring of Wade Gustafson. Lundgaard's overbearing father-in-law would be Mark. Presnell died in 2009 at the age of 75. Here's where we confess that calling screen comedy legend Fred Willard a DC actor is insanely reductive, and the same statement applies to a handful of entries on this list. Willard's oblivious game show host-like persona has added to the satirical irony of films such as This Is Spinal Tap, Best in Show, and Anchorman. Willard also played the President of the United States on Lois and Clark, as well as the Deputy Mayor of Metropolis in the Superman 50th Anniversary Special. Somehow, in Superman-related media, Willard kept finding his way into positions of political power. We'd chalk that up to coincidence, if we believed in coincidence. Willard passed away in May 2020 at the age of 86. The single-season TV show The Flash from the early 90s never managed to amass the retro-cool credibility of Batman from 1966 or Wonder Woman from 1975. There are probably multiple reasons for that, but a glance at the show's intro music and opening credits indicates that somebody in charge wanted very much for the flash of network television to be the Batman of Tim Burton films. CBS didn't have the budget, and Barry Allen didn't have the angst to fulfill that expectation. That's kind of unfortunate for Biff Maynard, as he appears in 17 out of the 22-episode run of The Flash. He was able to have a more than respectable career and legacy outside of his time as Officer Michael Murphy, though. Maynard shows up in both entries of the cult sci-fi series Trancers and acted on a score of television shows throughout the 80s and 90s. He died in 2014 at the age of 71. Cyborg to Aquaman, where the hell are you, fish dick? Cyborg has enjoyed something of a live-action revival as of late. As played by Ray Fisher, he got a heck of a lot more screen time in the recently released Zack Snyder's Justice League than he did in the original edit, while an iteration played by Juvan Wade has regularly appeared on Max's Doom Patrol series. But back in the 2000s, when studio executives falsely assumed television could only handle one DC-based primetime drama at a time, Lee Thompson Young was mass media's one and only flesh-and-blood Victor Stone. Though he only drops by for three hour-long adventures with Clark Kent on Smallville, Young's version of Stone gets to be a co-founder of the Justice League alongside Green Arrow. That means that the one-time Friday Night Lights and the famous Jet Jackson star definitely set some of the groundwork for Ray Fisher's tenure with the character. Young unfortunately died from suicide in 2013 at the age of 29. Perhaps you already know that Rudger Hauer, certainly one of the most recognized character actors in sci-fi fantasy, died in July 2019. 
And maybe you also already know that he played the nefarious Wayne Enterprises executive credited only as Earl in Batman Begins. While we left Heath Ledger and Christopher Reeve off this list because they're both highly publicized celebrity deaths, their careers are both also closely associated with their tenures as major DC characters. Howard, on the other hand, is probably too famous for the relatively minor part he plays in Batman Begins. We happen to know it's possible to watch multiple screenings of Batman Begins and still not notice the classic Blade Runner antagonist Roy Batty reassuring Bruce Wayne that he's got the best interests of the Wayne legacy at heart. Though Earl isn't a major part of Batman Begins, The Dark Knight wouldn't be the same movie if Bruce Wayne had not overcome a sleazy corporate ladder climber in the first part of the trilogy. Ergo, we can say there are two indispensable sci-fi fantasy action franchises that would not be the same today without Howard. Bruce, you're supposed to be dead. Sorry to disappoint. Heath Ledger's once-in-a-generation performance as the Joker tends to gobble up a huge chunk of the discourse when it comes to The Dark Knight, and rightfully so. But it's unfortunate how matters related to the Joker overshadow so many other components of Christopher Nolan's tour de force. Tom Tiny Lister Jr. only spends a few moments on screen, but as the tattooed inmate who protects a ship full of civilians by tossing the switch to one of the Joker's bombs into the ocean, he certainly makes those few moments count. Lister's poignant appearance in The Dark Knight isn't necessarily his most impressive career accomplishment. Back in the 80s, Lister went by the alias of Zeus and main evented the 1989 SummerSlam pay-per-view card, teaming with Macho Man Randy Savage against a tandem of Hulk Hogan and Brutus the Barber Beefcake. The rest of Lister's resume includes featured roles in Friday, The Fifth Element, and Jackie Brown. Lister passed away in December 2020 at the age of 62. Logan Williams appears as young Barry Allen in flashback and time travel sequences during the first two seasons of CW's The Flash. He also had a recurring role on the Hallmark Channel period drama When Calls the Heart, and landed his first role in the Hallmark movie The Color of Rain at the age of 10. He died in 2020 at 16 years old after a three-year battle with opioid addiction. His mother Marlies said at the time, His death is not going to be in vain. He's going to help a lot of people down the road. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, nearly 69,000 people in the U.S. died from overdosing on synthetic opioids in 2020. Sadly, Logan Williams was one of those statistics far too early into his life and what should have been a long and promising career. Can't you remember anything? I remember the Alamo. Yeah! Though Paul Rubin's place in pop culture history was assured by his most beloved creation, Pee Wee Herman, the actor-comedian also played a variety of other roles, some of which trucked into not-so-funny territory. Case in point, Batman Returns, which reunited Rubin's with Pee Wee's Big Adventure director Tim Burton. He played Tucker Cobblepot, a Gotham City district attorney who is horrified to discover that his infant son Oswald is physically disfigured. Cobblepot abandons his child, who is subsequently raised by Emperor Penguins at the old Gotham City Zoo and later becomes the monstrous Penguin. Rubens played a drug dealer in Blow, the restless ghost of a suicide victim in life during wartime, and the strange Mr. Vargas in five episodes of The Blacklist. He also played Elijah Van Dahl, a more sympathetic version of the Penguin's father on three episodes of Gotham. He voiced several DC characters, including Batmite and the Riddler on Batman the Brave and the Bold and the Robot Chicken DC Comics specials, respectively. Rubin's death from cancer at the age of 70 on July 30, 2023 was mourned by fans and collaborators alike. Though numerous actors have attempted to put their stamp on the physicality of Batman, one performer largely defined the Dark Knight's voice for more than three decades. Voice actor Kevin Conroy debuted as Batman in Bruce Timm and Eric Radomski's Emmy-winning Batman the Animated Series in 1992 and continued to voice the character in dozens and dozens of projects, including other DC Animated Universe series, feature films, and video games. Conroy also played the Earth-99 variant of Bruce Wayne on the CW's live-action Arrowverse crossover event Crisis on Infinite Earths. Conroy, who studied acting at Juilliard, began his career in theater and amassed a sizable number of live-action television credits, including recurring roles on Dynasty and Tour of Duty. In addition to his many turns as Batman, Conroy also lent his distinctive voice to such animated series as The Venture Brothers, Ben 10, Alien Force, and He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. In 2022, Conroy penned Finding Batman, which detailed how his own troubled childhood and experiences as a gay man informed his portrayal of Batman for DC Pride 2022. Conroy died of intestinal cancer at the age of 66 on November 10, 2022. His final performance as Batman will be featured in Rocksteady Games' Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League in 2024. Though created by Paul Dini and Bruce Timm, the DC anti-hero Harley Quinn also owes a debt to actress Arlene Sorkin for her iconic look, voice, and attitude. Dini, who knew Sorkin from college, saw a compilation reel of her appearances as the eccentric Calliope Jones on Days of Our Lives, which included a scene in which she was dressed as a jester. The scene inspired Dini and Tim to create Harley Quinn, a wisecracking henchwoman and foil for the Joker on Batman the Animated Series, and they tapped Sorkin to voice the character. 
She went on to play Quinn in five other animated series and numerous video games. Fine, I'll show you. You'll be sorry. I'll pull a big heist and I'll be laughing at you. Ha ha, you hear? Laughing! She logged more than 400 appearances on the days of her lives, as well as recurring in guest shots on series like Duet and Frasier. Additionally, Sorkin wrote episodes of Tiny Toon Adventures, created the short-lived sitcom Fired Up, and co-produced a 2010 documentary on Pakistani Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. Sorkin died of complications from pneumonia and multiple sclerosis on August 24, 2023. From the mid-1960s until Tim Burton's 1989 film Batman, Adam West was the on-screen face and voice of Batman for a generation of audiences. West played both the caped crusader and his dashing alter ego Bruce Wayne on ABC's Batman series from 1966 to 1968, but was unable to parlay that show's brief but meteoric fame into a more substantial acting career. Like George Reeves and many other actors who played superheroes, West found Batman to be a blessing and a curse. It elevated him to stardom, but also became a glass ceiling through which he was unable to break for decades. Perseverance and a willingness to spoof his screen persona led to West's revival as a comic actor and voice performer in the 1990s and 2000s. He appeared often as a smug version of himself in series like King of Queens, as well as films like Drop Dead Gorgeous, and he voiced numerous characters in animated series, including the deranged mayor on Family Guy. Uh, what don't you have in that belt? Patience for a Harlequin hoodlums like yourself. He also reteamed with Batman co-star Burt Ward to reprise their roles in animated form in two features, including Batman Return of the Caped Crusaders in 2016. West's death from leukemia at the age of 88 on June 9, 2017 was commemorated by the city of Los Angeles, which shone the bat signal on City Hall on June 15th of that year. Season 1, Episode 6 of Lucifer, titled Favorite Son, introduced viewers to Hank Cutter, president of the Los Diablos Motorcycle Club, whom Lucifer and Chloe suspect as the chief culprit behind the theft of a shipping container belonging to the Prince of Darkness from a warehouse. Hank proves to be anything but the typical biker captain. Though he looks tough as nails, what Hank really wants to do is start his own clothing line. He doesn't even like riding his bike. Tom Sizemore was in the midst of a comeback when he appeared as Hank Cutter on Lucifer. A substance abuse problem and other personal issues had caused the Golden Globe and Screen Actors Guild nominee to fall far from his status as a popular character actor in films like Saving Private Ryan, Heat, and Natural Born Killers. After stints in rehab and jail in the 2010s, Sizemore began to rebuild his screen career, largely through recurring roles on Hawaii Five-0, The Red Road, and the 2017 revival of Twin Peaks. However, Sizemore was hospitalized after experiencing a brain aneurysm and stroke at his home in Los Angeles on February 18, 2023. Doctors informed his family on February 27 that there was no chance of recovery, and his family made an end-of-life decision for the 61-year-old actor. He died on March 3, 2023. Warner Brothers' 2010 feature version of DC's weird western title Jonah Hex was an unmitigated disaster upon release. You can't place the blame on its cast, however, including Lance Reddick. The John Wick star plays a general store owner who also supplies Hex with his heavy-duty weaponry. A one-time music student who released an album of contemporary jazz in 2010, Reddick began acting in the late 1990s and earned his first big break as Baltimore police lieutenant and later commissioner Cedric Daniels on The Wire. The critical success of that series led to steady work for Reddick in character roles, often as authority figures on series like Lost, Bosch, and Resident Evil, and in films like the John Wick Tetralogy, which cast him as the Continental's concierge, as well as White House Down and Godzilla vs. Kong. Reddick died of heart disease at the age of 60 at his home in Los Angeles, California on March 17, 2023. I love you, son. Stop! British actor Julian Sands played a crucial figure in Superman's mythos in seasons 9 and 10 of Smallville. Sands played Jor-El, the Kryptonian scientist who sends his son Kal-El to Earth to avoid their planet's destruction. He also transfers his brainwaves into his son's spacecraft, providing him with the superior intellect to become Superman. Smallville was not Sands' only foray into DC projects. He also played Dr. Gerald Crane, father of the Scarecrow on Gotham. Sands rose to fame in the 1980s, playing diametrically opposite romantic characters. Helena Bottom Carter's free-thinking love interest in A Room with a View, and a haunted Percy Bysshe Shelley in Gothic. He soon proved adept at a wide array of characters, from a malevolent spellcaster in Warlock and a dashing entomologist in Arachnophobia to a vicious pimp in Leaving Las Vegas. No part proved too offbeat for Sands. He was a centipede in human form in David Cronenberg's Naked Lunch, the title character in Dario Argento's The Phantom of the Opera, and even the voice of a cat in Bobblehead's The Movie. Between these assignments were numerous television roles, stage work, and voiceovers for video games. An avid hiker, Sands disappeared in California's San Gabriel Mountains in January 2023. Human remains found in the area on June 24, 2023 were positively identified as the 65-year-old actor, whose cause of death remains undetermined. 